This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hi, this is the set of all natural numbers. Well, not exactly, since 1 is a natural number and is not contained in this set. We'll call this the set of all even numbers, since these are exactly the numbers divisible by 2. Now you might ask, Andrzej, you silly mathematician, why did you call it the set of all natural numbers in the first place? Because it is one. Or at least, these two sets have the same cardinality. Let me explain. In mathematics, the notion of equality extends beyond its usual understanding. For example, take a look at the following numbers. Would you say that these numbers are equal to each other? Of course not, they all have different values, so they cannot be possibly equal. But when we change the context, the definition of equality, they suddenly become all equal to each other. But in a different sense. The same goes for sets. In the normal sense, two sets are equal if they contain the same elements. For example, these two sets are not equal, because the first one contains 3 and the second one contains 4. But it is also usual to say that two sets are equal, or more formally, equivalent, if they have the same number of elements. In this way of thinking, these two sets are indeed equivalent, because they both have exactly three elements. In the set theory terminology, we would say that these two sets have the same cardinality, which is denoted like the absolute value. Ah, the thing from the beginning of the video. Yes, the set of even numbers is equivalent to the set of all natural numbers, which means that there are as many even numbers as all numbers. Weird, right? The proper way of dealing with comparing cardinalities of sets is to consider mappings or functions between them. What is a mapping, you say? If we have two sets, x and y for example, a mapping between them would be some sort of pairing of elements from x and from y, but with one restriction that each element from x must be paired with exactly one element from y. For example, this is not a valid mapping, because 3 from x is paired both with a and with b. If we remove one of these pairings, the whole thing becomes a proper mapping. Now, how this relates to cardinalities? Well, we will say that two sets are equivalent, or have the same cardinality, if and only if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between those two sets. A one-to-one -one correspondence is a special type of mapping, where not only all elements from X are paired with exactly one element from Y, but also all elements from Y are paired with exactly one element from X. Such one-to-one -one correspondence, or in other words bijection, is an ideal pairing between elements from X and Y. Because no element from X or Y is left unpaired. Here's an example of such bijection. It is clear that one-to-one -one correspondence exists between two sets only if those sets have the same number of elements, or in other words, only if they have the same cardinality. Now, what about the set of even numbers and the set of natural numbers? Does there exist a one-to-one -one correspondence between those? Of course it does. You can pair 2 with 1, 4 with 2, 6 with 3, and generally you can pair 2n with n for any natural number n. Such mapping is indeed a bijection, therefore the set of even numbers has the same cardinality as the set of all natural numbers. But wait, there are numbers that are not even. Moreover, there are infinitely many of those, because all odd numbers are of course natural and not even. Intuitively speaking, there are as many even numbers as odd ones, and since naturals consist of even numbers and odd numbers, the set of evens should have exactly two times less numbers than the set of all numbers. Right? Well, in the sense of cardinalities, the set of even numbers, the set of odd numbers and set of all natural numbers all have the same size. Well any infinite subset of the set of all natural numbers, for example the set of perfect squares, the set of perfect cubes, the set of primes, 
all have the same size as the set of all natural numbers. That's a bit paradoxical, since it doesn't match our way of thinking about the size of a set. But don't worry though, mathematics got you covered. There is a proper mathematical way to acknowledge the fact that exactly one half of all numbers are even. This tool is called asymptotic density. The idea is simple. Instead of calculating the ratio between the number of even numbers and the number of all numbers, whatever that ratio would mean, we will consider a sequence of such ratios, but for sets that are finite. The limit of this sequence will be the asymptotic density we are seeking. Let A denote the set which density we would like to calculate. In our case, A will be the set of all even numbers. Now A n will be the set of all elements from A that are smaller than or equal to n. The sequence I've talked about earlier would be the sequence of ratios between the cardinality of a n and the number n. And if the sequence converges to some number, this number would be the asymptotic density of a. Let's take a look at how this sequence behaves in our example. Now, to be precise, we need to prove that the asymptotic density of the set of even numbers is one half. This is not that hard though, it's a fairly straightforward exercise on limits. To make my life harder, I will prove it with the epsilon definition of limits. Enjoy! Asymptotic density gives you a good view on how big a subset of the set of natural numbers is. For example, the set of prime numbers, despite the fact that it is infinite, has a density equal to zero. The set of primes is merely a drop in the ocean of natural numbers. The simple approach through cardinalities is not sufficient to show that. But asymptotic density is not ideal too. For example, there are sets for which this density doesn't exist. Let's divide the sequence of natural numbers into these blocks, each of them being two times longer than the previous one. If we get rid of every second block, we arrive at a set that doesn't have an asymptotic density. The flaw, which causes it, is located in its limit definition. For asymptotic density to exist, we need the limit to exist, and we know for a fact that's not always the case. To summarize, the answer to the question, how many numbers are even, depends completely on your interpretation of this question. We could see that all numbers are even, or exactly one half of numbers are even, but these are not the only possible answers. There are more densities than the asymptotic one, for example the Schnirelmann density of the set of even numbers is zero. Counterintuitive, but the cardinality approach is not better. The moral of this story is that mathematics is all about being precise in the questions we ask and answers we give. And yes, floor function had to be included in this video. I'm sorry, okay? It's my favorite function, I had to put it somewhere. The topic of set cardinality is very broad, much broader than what I've presented in this video. If you want to get a deeper understanding of this concept, you should definitely check out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website with a great number of courses on basics of math or more advanced topics. They have STEM related courses too. What I appreciate in their lessons is that they teach you the topics thoroughly while making the studying process easy and the material very approachable, especially because of their genius visual approach. Here's a course on cardinality, which will deepen your understanding of this topic. If you want to check them out, you can visit brilliant.org slash maffinity, where you will get a free premium subscription to Brilliant for 30 days. Brilliant is also offering a 20% discount for the annual premium subscription for the 200 first subscribers, which will sign up through brilliant.org slash maffinity. I'll also put that link in the description. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and 
Thank you for watching.